All right. Welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Make sure you subscribe, give us a like, ring the bell, follow us on social media. Today on the podcast, we have rock and roll band Foundry. How are you guys doing today? Good, man. Great. Yeah. It's so good to have you guys on the podcast, man. I'm really, uh, really excited to have you here. We've been uh, working on some cool new stuff with the band, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to talk about it, let everybody know what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Super good to reconnect with you. I know, right? We uh, we were working together for a second, and then I just got you know lost in the corporate world, and uh, you know the the destruction of the industry kind of brought us back together. I had some time to actually make do with you guys, man. That's right. You can't keep a good man down. That's it, man. So it's exciting to start mixing bands again. I love it. Yeah, I love it. That's what got me into it in the first place, man. Sure is, and uh, you're pretty. Um pretty good at it <laughs> why thank you sir i like to think so man i certainly enjoy it that's for sure so uh how you guys been doing man you know like uh i know we got the the new system coming out we got a new tour going on you guys have uh you've been working on some new music right yeah all always those three things <laughs> always always trying yeah we've got some cool shows coming up just to finish out the year um, 21's been a little hit or miss still. Um, but hit or miss is better than zero from 20. You yeah. Know what I mean? Uh, so 22 looks pretty promising with some, uh, some great big shows that we're super stoked about. <laughs> and the music, uh, the new music is kind of written and done, right? We're, yeah. we're, we're set pretty good on music for a little while. We'll release that in, in little spots over 22, you know? Nice. So, yeah. You guys done to be doing a, a full length album kind of deal, or are you going to be going more of like releasing singles as you go now? We've been in the singles game pretty much from the beginning. Yeah, we did a we did a first album, like our debut album was was just that an album. Uh, but we've been in the singles game for five six years now. Oh, nice! And it's just like that. We tend to record them in in uh, groups of like two or three. And then release them one at a time over the course of a year or so, along with some remakes, <laughs> the ever popular remakes. Yeah. And we have fun with those, too. And, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Nice. Oh, is yeah. that what we're doing? Yeah. And we've been working with a great producer named Colin Britton, uh, who's famous from working with uh, Papa Roach and lots of others, too. Now he's he just moved to Nashville, and he's, he's really hooked up over there. But uh, great producer. Yeah. Can't recommend him any higher than that. Yeah. That's awesome. And you guys are recording. You have your own uh, studio, right? Is it the uh, Checkered Moose? Is it not Checkered Moose anymore? You <laughs> moved into that new moved. church, right? We moved, yes. Uh, that's a whole other another story. But I'll go ahead and plug that right now. Yeah. Uh, uh, a friend of mine, partner, pseudo partner, and I are uh, renovating a an old Las Vegas chapel. Uh, built in 1939, this thing, and we're renovating it into a music studio. I think it's bigger than a chapel. It's it's really like a church. It it's, really is. It's pretty big. It's just that you know what I've been getting with when I say a church, people think this big Gothic cathedral thing. Like oh, not yeah. in, not, you know, in Vegas. Vegas not, not in Vegas. Vegas is not in Vegas. Yeah, so it's it's like a a big chapel. Anyway, that's what <laughs> we're doing, and uh, we just moved from where we were before. Yeah, uh, in, into there. We're renovating it now. We think we'll be done with that uh, just in a couple of weeks. Really? We haven't quit working though. You know, we've been working through the construction as as we do. You know, uh, like this place, dude. You know, you just work through it, right? Yeah, you just know, keep you getting just better. Keep moving. Yeah, keep getting better, man, and stay focused on the music and the art. And then, uh, you know, everything after that is all about the commercial world. <laughs> you know? That's cool. Yeah, yeah we're going to call it real quick, though. We're going to call it the Sonic Temple. That's right. The Sonic Temple. Yeah. I dig it. No, and uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to be able to check it out uh, and before you started doing a lot of the renovations. And it's just a beautiful facility. It's got so much potential, man. Yeah. No, I'm Creaky forward. wood floors and stained yeah. glass, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you don't see much of that good. here. No, not at all. And it's got good vibes, man. It's got yes. good bones. And I think you're going to be able to get a lot of good tunes out of there. We think whatever spirits are lurking around the old church, 
our good ones so yeah. far. So far. <laughs> nice. Well, yeah, because you guys just moved from uh, Bobby Ferrari's joint. Right. right? So he was Checkered Moose. That's he was Checkered Moose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I love Bobby. I've been meaning to have him on the podcast. I was talking to him when I was over there at Checkered Moose, and yeah. he was interested in coming on. Yeah. And just, uh, you know. It's one, one, one person a week. <laughs> it goes fast. Yeah. One of the many who have many stories to tell. Yeah. Bobby Ferrari. Bobby you know. Ferrari's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool awesome. Dude. Yeah. So. so you guys are uh, doing, so for the new tour, you're setting up this really cool system that I'm excited to get my hands on. It's all Mark of the Unicorn, automated stuff. You're running like Simpty time code and all this stuff for your uh, video and lighting playback. And yeah. tell me a little bit about that, man. So I'm not the right person to get into particulars <laughs> about that. Okay, I'm going to pull the drummer card, right? Yeah. You could tell me more about it than me, but my partner, Michael, um, part of the Sonic Temple, um, is putting it together for us. And then you and Miranda will be... Uh, picking up the tail ends of that and making it come to life. But um, what I know is it's going to automate us. Yeah. And that it costs a lot of money. <laughs> and I'm going to step out of that qu question. Uh, <laughs> no, it's pretty interesting stuff yeah. you're putting together. And it's kind of like the future of, uh, of rock shows, man. You're not going to be mm -hmm. traveling with a big console. It's like everything in a rack. Yeah. And it's I mean, all it's a, it's a in the box programmed In the box live setup where we can... Um, time code our sound lights and video now we haven't got stepped into the video part yet yeah but we believe that's a, a a must for future oh yeah shows so um when the time is right for that uh when the budget allows it we'll we'll uh, we'll step it we'll have the we can do it yeah. right now we can't do it <laughs> no it's a yeah. video is a lot of work man to program yeah. all that and to actually yeah. get it all edited and ready to go per song Mm -hmm. So, but it's definitely a huge priority these days with, uh, I mean, every venue you go to is going to have video available. Yeah. And what's happening, I think, is is what's always happened when you hear stories of Motley or whoever, you know, when they were coming up, it was like, we try to do a big rock show in a small club. Yeah. And uh, we're trying to do a big rock show in a small club, <laughs> but 2022 version. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... They did it their way with smoke bombs and makeshift pyro and a lot of makeup and stuff. I mean, but today it's all about video and media, multimedia, and, and it's, it's all part of the art of the music. Yeah. You know, it brings it to life in a different way, you know. So are you planning on traveling with the lighting package too? Or are you, you like pre-programming lights and then using the install? Uh, well, yeah, well, obviously it'll be pro everything will be pre-programmed yeah. as far as traveling with the lights. No, um, there's no real cool way to say it. We just rent, <laughs> rent local. Yeah. You rent the lighting package local. Okay. Yeah. And a lot of times, um, depending on the venue, not the clubs, but you know, the, the, the nice theaters and the bigger venues typically have the state of the art shit in house. Yeah. You know? So it's just like, plug in, play. Nice. Yeah, that's the idea. Well, I hope it. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how we uh, how we make it work. I was just know, about how, to say you were going to find out. out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I'll be uh, pulling a uh, what touchscreen laptop out to the front of house, connected to a Cat Five cable. So we'll just like that'll be the console. I'll just be operating the Motu interface. It's going to be whatever very you say. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> whatever you say. It's going to be an interesting system, <laughs> yeah. man. It's definitely new for me. Yeah. And uh, I know I'm really excited about it. And you have those, uh, the Pearl Mimic Pro drums that I remember last time you were on here, we kind of did a little side video mm -hmm. messing around with your Pearl Mimic Pro, but that thing's amazing and having everything like in the box sound, you mm -hmm. know? So, and we're using... Metallica's drum sounds, right? Mostly. Yeah. yeah. Mixed in with some some um, factory sounds that are pretty awesome. It, the, the modules, 100% slate. Yeah. So it's pretty good. Yeah. No, I it's, mean, they're, they're pretty awesome sounds mm -hmm. and pretty awesome samples what and being able to use. The drums yeah, have been huh? sounding pretty good lately. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, this show we did... Your drums sounded a thousand times better than the band. I won't say the name of the band that we played with, um, who've been around forever and have great sounding stuff. 
but your stuff, your drums sound. Yeah. Everybody said it was amazing. And Thank I you, Jason Froberg. Ha. Yeah. And Stephen Slate, digital. Yeah. Well, we had yeah we had Jason running sound. That didn't hurt. That was fun. I liked that show. Elvis's old house, and I got to use a PM uh, PM One D. I haven't touched one of those in forever. Yeah. They have some classic stuff there. Yeah. That was like the best of the best at the time, and it's cool to revisit it. You're just like, dude, this is that old shit. Yeah. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Well, it's a, it was a lot of fun for me to go out there and mix in that room. It's yeah. like a legendary room, man. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was We'll do some more stuff there. That. Yeah. That, that level, you know, yeah. uh, uh, Tesla sticks, you know, kind of. Oh, did I just say that? <laughs> yeah, like that. I dig it. Yeah. I dig Great it. Great classic bands. Yeah, you guys are getting to play with a lot of amazing artists, man. And uh, this is a huge opportunity. And mm -hmm. it seems like you're just blowing up like crazy. I was looking at your uh, social media on here. You have like, what, 70-something thousand followers on Facebook and mm -hmm. almost 25,000 on Instagram. That's, that's huge, man. Yeah. That is huge. Yeah. Facebook's been a little better. I think, I think that's our demographic is a little more Facebook than Insta. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, we're we're happy we're happy about it. Oh we, yeah, we work it, man. We really do. Well, you, you guys, know? you guys are like right at that level of about to be like. Uh, we talk about it a lot on the podcast with some of the bands where uh, record labels are looking for that kind of social media following right. before they take interest in a band. And it seems like you're you're about there. You're breaking the numbers and about to be picked up by a major label almost. I'd mm -hmm. imagine. Have you guys been getting any offers from anybody yet? Not really. No. No. I'm surprised. No. Um, I don't I don't even know how that works. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'll, I won't even, and I've been in the biz for a minute, too. I'm not yeah. just, uh, I'm kind of a, I think if a lot of people know this, I'm a bit of a businessman first and a, a drummer second. Um, been in it for a minute. And I don't even know if, if that exists. I mean, I know there are bands getting deals. I, I, but I just don't even know what that looks like. You know what I mean? It, it honestly, it looks like uh, when they when they they are interested in a band, it's all about social media presence now. Like no one cares about what the music is or anything like that. They're like, how many followers do you guys have? And can I? You know, are you already marketing this product? Uh, it's to, definitely at a level. It's and definitely the one of the metrics that they look at. Oh yeah, you know. Um, but yeah, no, no real interest. But um, the, I think the interest that comes uh, are probably from um, us inquiring, just as much as we get in inquiries. Yeah, does that make sense? I kind of like we're 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 always on the lookout for opportunity, you know. And um, so there's a couple of management companies that we're talking to, but I wouldn't sit here and say that they approached us. Yeah. yeah. No, you got to go out the there other and way hustle. around. Yeah, we we for we, sure. we've hustled for just about everything. So yeah, you have yeah. to in this business, mm -hmm. man. It's really hard to get out there and get your name like on people's lips, man. You know? Yeah, we're we're just we're on the brink of um, signing an agreement with a booking agency. Nice. Um, that is a, a a part of our business model that needs to needs to be stepped up. Yeah. You know. Um, uh, honestly, I, 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 Mark and I talked about this the other day, Mark Bowles and I, that um, I've, I feel like I've taken it as far as I can take it. And yeah, like you an said, we're on the hard. brink. Yeah, we're on the brink of some stuff, but some, um, some changes need to be made in that department. Yeah, so we can, um, well, realize, realize our goals. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's so. like those people have access to networks that are just unavailable to the you know the rest of us, man. And once no you're question. in those networks, it just starts snowballing. That's it. So that that and some some proper management. You yeah. Know? And those are some reins that I won't let go of too easily. I need to make sure that that uh, you know our people are are. Uh, I mean, I'm making a decision for not just me. You know, there's there's five or six of us that will be affected by that. So I want it to be good, man. Yeah. You know, I want it to be really, really good. Like, let's, this guy deserves it. That's for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, so. It's a fucking legitimate rock star over here. Playing this is some the, deep shit we're talking you know about, I mean? man. This yeah, is some deep shit. podcast, though, We need the man. espresso to kick in and, <laughs> you know. 
<laughs> well, you know, I'm just excited for you guys because it's it's obvious you're like right on the verge of blowing up, man. You're playing with a lot of these big bands. How'd you get? Uh, how'd you get on these uh, tours with these big bands that you were saying uh, was it Sticks and hustling. Warrant and everything like that? You know, hustling, just hustling. You know, and and like you were saying earlier about metrics, you know, social media. There there are other metrics like some radio and streaming. Yeah, um, those those are by far and away the the bigger things that they look at than social media. You know, yeah, so, we so, we have gotten some airplay with the yeah. last how many songs? Yeah, last two songs we we we've broke broke the top forty with our first two songs nice. to radio, and our third one is out now, and uh, we have. We have high hopes for that, higher than the others. Intoxicate went to 38. Mm -hmm. Not This Time went to 32. That's impressive. And we hope Another Way, that's our current one. Just released it about a month ago. Um, There's some ramp up time there, but we should probably start seeing something. If we don't, I'm going to (laughs) cry. Will you help me? Will you? you? Uh, I'll give you a hug. Thank you. But only if you cry. (laughs) <laughs> I could rock a tear right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's what that that's helped a lot. Um, so they look at that and they're just like, looks good, sounds good. Don't 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 want to like come off as bragging, but we we mm-hmm. get pretty good compliments on the music. Yeah, and dude, I don't care what you're doing, who you are, you know, if you got a bunch of money or none, you know, to push your your uh, project forward um, really comes down to the songs. Yeah. It really does. You know, you can spend all your days on TikTok and whatever and have the best gimmicks in the world, marketing team, whatever. It really comes down to the songs, man. Yeah, and I think you guys have a really nice catalog of music you're touring yeah. right now. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's like modern. It's got a good that good rock vibe to it, you know, and mm-hmm. it's just it's it's punchy. And I mm-hmm. dig it. And I dig what you do live where it, there's no um, amps or sound coming off the stage. Yeah. As an audio engineer, it's like that's that's always the dream, man, you know, because you're yeah. using the digital drums. Everyone's straight DI out of their systems, you know, guitar, bass, everything like that. Mm-hmm. And so it's like you can get just a perfect, beautiful mix whenever you guys are bringing that kind of uh, professionalism, yeah. you know, to, to the stage. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're digging it. It's it's a different vibe. Yeah, you know, um, I kind of yeah. miss I miss the air, don't yeah. you? Yeah, Mark misses the air. Yeah, you have to get used to it. I mean, but especially in the smaller venues, it's killer. Um, but it works everywhere. It's just weird on stage. It's really quiet. If you take take your ears out, it's like what? <laughs> oh, there it is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I was uh, talking about on like the new system and and working on the riders is getting some side fills going at least so mm-hmm. you can fill the yeah. air and on the mm-hmm. stage and feel a little more natural, a little more totally. punch when you take the ears out. Yeah. Totally, it definitely helps. Big it time. does. Yeah. So. Yeah, maybe we can turn some uh, one of the mains <laughs> back at us or something. You know. Yeah. Something. No, that's what this, you know. That's what the side fills would be for. We're yeah. out, you know. We can route a matrix or an aux, so we can custom blend the mix up there for you guys, and it'll feel really clean and and punchy and live. Yeah. As opposed to like super sterile for you, because yeah, not having any monitors on stage or amps or anything like that. I mean, it's great for front, but it does definitely feel awkward whenever you're performing. It does. You, know? you just have to get used to it. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 all part of the new technology, and you got to use it use it for all the good that it can do. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it big time, man. And uh, we got the the next shows coming up in Louisiana, right? Yep, Lafayette Cajun Dome. That's awesome. That's on uh, the 28th, 27th, 27th, 27th. It's, uh, Thanksgiving weekend. That little <laughs> time. We do that on purpose because it's a four day weekend for most everybody. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, and um, there's some other things that happen in that in that town that weekend that I'm in the in the know a lot of that's my hometown so oh is it Lafayette's my hometown I didn't know that yeah yeah so the university does a lot of things like last football game of the season this kind of thing you know so they do some rah-rah and some little fair and these things so we we get the concert around that time it it's a little um almost makes it like a little festival you nice know? we try to hit that every year nice. yeah so yeah. when did you uh, relocate to Las Vegas from uh, Louisiana? Okay, man? so I well I I relocated to Dallas 
from Lafayette. Oh, I was 17, so. Oh, was fun. A long fucking time ago. Yeah. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't that old, dude. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I lived in Dallas for about 15 years, but I relocated to Vegas from there in 04. So I've been here almost 18 years. Wow. Almost 17 years. So I've been here that long. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So bringing a show back to Lafayette has a neat kind of thing because it's like back to your hometown. You kind of have your, you know, your core. Yeah, you got that peoples. circle of friends that are going to come out and see you. Yeah, see where you've like gotten. no matter what, Yeah, you know, kind of thing. Um, and then um, it hasn't changed much from when I lived there a long time ago. Everyone's slightly starved. <laughs> for this kind of thing that we do, this hard rock, you know, thing. Yeah. It's not exactly a, a stopping uh, place for most tours. So we can we can bring some some shows back there, and we all get off. Nice. And we all have fun. That's what it's about, man. That is what it's about, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's about music and having fun. I uh, love it, man. So Mr. Bowles. Yes, sir. You were uh, the singer on Ingve Malmsteen's trilogy album. Yeah, it's the first album I ever did. Yeah. That's pretty freaking cool. Ingve was uh, mainly just doing guitar stuff until that album, right? Yeah, he did a lot of instrumental stuff on his first two albums. It was it was mixed uh, vocals and stuff. Uh, uh, but this one was there was only one instrumental. It was still one, but <laughs> <laughs> but the rest were all vocal songs. Yeah. Yeah. How was it working with uh, with Ingve, man? He's uh, he's quite a um, it's a nice way to put it. <laughs> yeah. Eccentric character, man. Yeah, he's the first you know the first impression when I worked with him was uh, just you, you just get blown away by his talent because at the time his talent was just incredible. It was just exploding like a volcano. Yeah, and uh, you, and you kind of overlook all the other little things that that are not so nice <laughs> uh, but um he's basically a spoiled brat and i think he'll always be a spoiled brat and he's he had a t rough childhood from what i've heard from his friends and acquaintances but um mike varney brought him to america when he was like 17 i think and he had it easy from that point on so yeah he got whatever he wanted so i mean he is an incredible talent man yeah for sure I, I think it's it's unfortunately it's faded a little bit now yeah. from what it used to be when he was young he was on fire and it was so much fun to be on stage with him you know uh the band was rocking and and it was the good old days we were you know there was no uh in-ear monitors it was just loud and loud and louder and he liked it loud um, we were touring. We toured. The first tour we did was with ACDC. Okay. I did like a hundred and some shows with ACDC. So. Oh wow. Um, and it was. They were even louder. They were the loudest band I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> yeah, that's what I hear. <laughs> but uh, that was good times. It was a good good start for me, for nice. my career. Yeah. Yeah, I've uh, I've worked with Ingve uh, at the House of Blues, and that dude traveled with uh, a fifty three footer full of four by twelves. <laughs> And he just had, you know, a million marshals, and he came, he had a stack them. I think it was like three high, four wide, mm -hmm. and they were all powered. Like none of them were false cabinets. Are you which, sure about that? Yeah, we were really like, this is ridiculous that he's doing this, you know. And because uh, it was like, yeah, you know, like the one on the bottom is the one that we put the mic on, and mm -hmm. it's the one that we power. Mm -hmm. And uh, but he he was just rocking all of them, man. And he walked out and. He was like, oh, like the the bottom one and the inside. He was like, oh, there's a nick on that one. He goes, go get another one off the truck and, and replace it. And it's like, you mean tear the whole thing down and yeah. <laughs> replace it for a nick? Well, yeah. yeah he used to stop shows in the middle of the show saying, my guitar doesn't sound right. And he'd walk off stage. So that's the kind of guy he was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's a, he's an interesting cat, <laughs> character, man. Character, yeah. Yeah. I love all that uh, eccentricity in rock stars. <laughs> you know, you never know what you're going to get with people sometimes. So, but now you're doing uh, you're doing the Rock Vault on the Strip. I believe that show's coming back in 2022. Mm. No, no, I you're have, not doing that anymore. I haven't done that s for a couple of years. Yeah. Oh, no, okay. I, I did it uh, starting in 2013, I think, and and I did it for like 
almost just under six years, five and a half years, something like that. Oh, okay. But it kept getting smaller and smaller, um, and the management weren't weren't handling the business part of it right, and uh, I just got, I just had to go and do other things. Yeah. But it wasn't because of anybody in the band, the the people we had, we had a rotating cast of fantastic people, uh, several rock and roll hall of famers, and it was really great. But uh, when the management isn't doing it right, that ruins it. So yeah. So yeah, I think they're trying to bring it back. I don't know. They really need to just uh, revamp it with new management. Then it would, then it would probably work. Oh uh, you know? yeah. yeah. But that's not up to me. So. Well, I hope they keep it going, man. I know I have a lot of friends in that show that are uh, that are making a good living doing yeah. that rock vault thing. Well, Howard Lease is the music director. He's really cool, but he's he's busy with uh, Bad Company most of the time, so he's not there okay. all the time. But he's a really good friend. All of them are good friends of mine. Um, yeah, good people. Yeah. Talent. I, a lot of talent there. Yeah, everybody on that show is pretty pretty solid dudes, man. Yeah. Especially my uh, buddy Paul Shortino. Oh, I definitely Shorty, want to get yeah. him on here, man. I just love that guy. He's just Shorty, a, he's he'll a go character. on and on for hours. He's a talker. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> he's he's a he's an old school hippie. And he's a such a sweetheart guy. And uh it's nothing but fun times when he's around. Yeah. yeah. He's just a ball of light, man. Yeah. I always love being around Shortino. <laughs> And his voice, I've never worked with a more powerful singer, you know, like, uh, I always have to take my gains and dump them hard back, because I know he's going to just blow everything up. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm, how do you sing so friggin' loud, man? You I know? always tell him he reminds me of Steve Marriott, the guy from Humble Pie. Uh, he has the same style, which I really dug, so, when yeah. I was a kid. So, yeah, cool guy. Yeah, yeah, super cool guy. And uh, before we turned the cameras on, you were talking about uh, going out with Dawkin this last weekend, right? Yeah, they're, they're, I, I played bass with Dawkin for a while, a few years back, and uh, so I kind of know some of the songs and stuff. And uh, their bass player caught COVID last week, oh. and they had a big show this weekend in Chicago. Uh, so Don called me, hey, can you, can you come out? And I said, yeah, sure. Uh, so, yeah, we played this, this big show uh, in a really old vaudeville theater like probably held about three three thousand or something, but uh, it was a big old school show with a big PA, no in ears, big monitors, everything loud. It was great. It was so much fun. Monitors are so much fun when, and when they I, crank. When I play bass, it makes me feel like a kid. So that's that's a double double thing for me, a double bonus. So that's awesome. Fun. A lot of fun. And Don's a super nice guy. He's he's always been a close friend for many many years I, I just uh, sang the background vocals they're putting out a new album I just did all the background vocals for the new album too oh really yeah new Dawkin album yeah I'm actually really interested in that Dawkin was kind of my uh, guilty pl pleasure growing up man everyone's like what are you listening to Dawkin for I'm only 36 so like are we talking about you know early 2000s when I was in high school listening to Dawkin well, I was just you know that's when I was on the tour bus with Ingve, we used to blast Dawkin in, in the back lounge oh, okay as loud as it would go <laughs> Ingbe didn't like it, but everybody else did. <laughs> I dug it, man. Uh, yeah, George Lynch, man. Yeah. That yeah, guy's he was amazing. There. He came up and played three songs at the end of the show. Oh, really? This weekend, yeah. That's so cool, man, to see yeah. George Lynch and Do Don yeah. Dawkins on stage together again. Yeah. What a rare opportunity that is. Yep. That's, that's pretty cool. awesome, man. A lot of fun. Yeah, I got. I had the privilege. I've worked with George a bunch of times, mm -hmm. and then uh, and he's an amazing guy. Yeah, and uh, I had the privilege of actually getting to work with Don, and uh, and he just uh, you know he didn't know me from anybody. I'm just this, the sound guy at the club, and he hung out and talked to me for like 45 minutes, almost an hour, just like oh, we were yeah. best buds, and he'd known me forever. I mean, that's the kind of guy he is. Yeah, he's he just, kind of an old school hippie type too, and and just super nice to everybody because why not why not be that way but you yeah know. well i mean you just you know i don't get that from very many people doing no. it a lot of people are doing their own rare. thing and it's like cool well thanks for getting my monitors yet you know i'm i'm busy and he was just the I, i've never had a nicer experience with a person like like don he's just a the sweetheart of a guy yeah well he, he flew me out to his new place in santa fe he lives up on top of a mountain in new mexico now oh cool had to, got a studio set up in there and uh, recorded all the vocals there and just hung out. He had a he has a guest house. He put me in the guest house and we had a great time. 
and he's he loves to tell stories you know yes that's somebody you should do. get on here he'll he'll tell you some stories bro i would <laughs> love to have don Dawkins on my podcast <laughs> that would just be a dream come true man i am a i'm like a big fan of his honestly i think he's amazing we'll talk after the show we'll see what i gotta do to get him <laughs> okay <laughs> we'll pull some strings, man. Get him in town and uh, and see if I can't sneak him over to the house for a second. That would be amazing. Don got us our start. Yeah, that's true. Did he? He did. How did that happen? Uh, he and Kelly were buds. You know, Don's a friendly guy, so he knows Kelly Keeling. Oh yeah, and uh, Mark obviously, and yeah, that was. Um, uh, well, I forget how it went down exactly, but. Um, he put, Kel- you, put Kelly, you guys on the show. I wasn't he, in the band yet. I was playing with Dawkins at the he, time. You were playing with Dawkins at the time. I was We, opened up, yet. we yeah. opened up for Dawkins in Queensryche. That oh, was our cool. first show. That and was your first show? Yeah, pretty much. That's yeah. an amazing first show. Yeah. So Kelly was like, man, we need to do some shows. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you know? And he's like, you should call Don. I'm like, yeah. You know? He's like, I've got his number. I'll call him. Because <laughs> Kelly was a little skittish, as we know. And, yeah. uh, he was like, here, look, just, just shoot him a text. Tell him you're with me. And I did. And he called me back. I mean, it was just like that. That's amazing. Yeah. He was like, uh, I was like, hey, you guys are playing in Vegas in like two weeks. Would you throw us on as an opener? He's like, let me call you back. And a week went by, and I was like, yeah, that's, he's not going to call back. Yeah. And he did. Wow. He did. He goes, hey, call this guy. He's our tour manager. He'll squeak you guys on, make the arrangements, and that was our first show. And Dude. this guy was playing bass. <laughs> yeah, so, which is which is how we picked him up because he and Kelly are friends. Okay. And he was like, "That's the fucking guy we need," <laughs> you know. I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> so it all went to it, so so. Thank you, Don Dawkins. You know, I always uh, I try to plug that every chance I get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, people don't. You know, he's he's been instrumental in a lot of people's careers for sure and he doesn't pat himself on the back for that you have to kind of dig it out of him but he's helped a lot of people get get their careers going yeah he really is he's one of those guys if you ever talk to him there's a few little interviews out there where people dig and he'll say oh he was involved in this and that and that and this and you're like wow makes sense you know it's just like connecting the dots you know what i mean yeah he's real he's real cool that way that's real cool He's actually not pre- not pretentious, like not that. At yeah, all. He, he's totally. The he's opposite. not a name dropper. Mm-hmm. No, but he knows everybody. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's been doing it since the '80s, man. Yeah, know, and yeah. then we ended up working with him a, a, quite a few times after that. Thankfully, he was very cool. Yeah, you know, he knows what it's like. He's like, okay, you guys are trying to come up. You're good. You know, I know you're not going to let me down in that department. So let me see what I can do for you. How cool? And he just yeah, boom, boom. How so. Cool. Yeah, so that's how we got got started, and that's how we we met Mark Bowles for real, like officially. Mm-hmm. You know, I never forget. I was uh, setting up my drums when we were opening opening up, and they were still sound checking. And the stage guys like, "Hey, we need you guys to go ahead and set up." And I was like, "Well, they're still sound checking." He goes, "No, it's cool. They're they're pretty much done." Um, so I'm setting up my drums. And they're sound checking at the same time. A little awkward, right? Yeah. But they did. They were. And this guy was singing. He, oh, Don, he, Don doesn't do. Don sound doesn't checks. do sound checks. <laughs> oh yeah. But I, I had my back turned, and he's singing, and I'm like fucking around with my drum, bass drum or something, you know. I never forget. He was actually standing on my drum, drum, drum rug. You were standing on my drum rug, dude, and I was trying to pull it, but his <laughs> foot was on it. I was like, fuck. And then I looked up. I, remember I thought that. it. I thought it was Don singing, but it was him. Because when I tried to pull it out, I was like, the bass player standing on my fucking rug. You know, I'm trying to get it going. Um, we're under time, you know? Yeah. And I look up, and it wasn't Don. I was like, oh, that's the bass player singing. I was like, that fucking sounds good, too. Wow. You know? <laughs> I'd have to agree yeah. with that. And then later that night, Kelly was like, that, that guy right there, that's our guy. <laughs> you know? Well, Kelly didn't even know it was me at first. He, I, I said, hi, Kelly, how you doing? <laughs> no shit. He, he's looking at me like, and I said, it's Mark Bowles. He says, oh, Mark, yeah, wow, I didn't know you were here. What are you doing? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he didn't know. And then later later in the night, like, it was, we were all pretty much, remember how hot it was? Yeah. <sighs> in the middle of summer, it was August or something. August, it's like 110. It was so bad oh. outside. Oh, playing outside. Yeah. 
anyway, that's yeah. how we that's how we got our start, man. Didn't mean to take it there, but Don Don's ultra cool. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that is a cool story for a foundry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a wicked cool story. And yeah, speaking of uh, like playing outside in the desert, man, I've done my fair share of doing that. And I remember one time we were doing a uh, a music video out in the middle of Death Valley in July. Congratulations! Oh my God, what a dumbass <laughs> move that was. Death Valley, Death Valley? Are you kidding hey, me? Listen. Yeah, Death. I know, right? Valley. Okay, <laughs> that's what. <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so we're out there, and, like, we're in, like, direct sunlight for hours just, like, banging our heads and rocking out as hard as we can for this music video. No heat just, stroke? Total heat stroke. Yeah, totally. Like, I was just like, man, I don't know what's going on, but I can't see straight, and I'm just feeling like I'm not feeling it right now. And I yeah. start, and I just took a bunch of water, like ice water, and poured it over my head, and immediately, like, my vision started coming back, and I was like, oh, I'm literally boiling You're my brain eating. in the desert right yeah. now. Yeah. And, yeah, and just that's brutal, that's man, when you're thing. out there, you know, playing in the sun. That's a real thing. Yeah. Yeah. It gets wild. So, good times in the desert near Death Valley. Yeah. <laughs> I highly, I do not recommend that at all. Yeah. Uh, and the rest of the guys are ridiculous. They just brought whiskey. Like, I was the only one who brought, thought to brought water and food while we were out there. They're just like, what do we need that shit for, man? We got cameras. We got whiskey. Yeah. Let's shoot a music video. Rock and roll. Oh, we would have fucking died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool, man. Well, it probably looked cool, though. I mean, you know, just, it, those desert scenes look beautiful. They did come out really good. Yeah. Yeah. It was almost worth the brain damage. <laughs> <laughs> almost. So let's do. Let's make the next one. That. Mm. Like a in western. The winter, like in the winter. In the winter. Yeah. yeah. A western. Like a western. Oh. Love westerns. In the winter time, yeah. There's a there's a few places out there with, with you know abandoned shacks and stuff yeah. and ghost town kind of stuff. Slide it up. Those abandoned shacks off the side of the freeway are real That's, cool, man. Yeah, <laughs> that stuff's awesome with all the graffiti and yeah. just trashed roofs falling in on themselves. <laughs> uh, yeah, we stop. Angela and I will stop and take pictures and everything and shoot a bunch of photography out there at those places. It's just apocalyptic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I definitely want to like try to get some. Uh, one of the music videos that I produce out there and shooting some of those apocalypse scenes in those trashed ass buildings. Yep. We'll see what happens with it though, man. So, so back from docking. Yeah. Back in Vegas. Yep. Living the dream. <laughs> it's living. It's not really dreaming, but but it's it's all good. I mean, life is good. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a it's a crazy world right now. So we're, I'm just thankful to be here and healthy and. And uh, you know, not not bankrupt and homeless. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh uh, yeah, that's a lot to ask these days too, man. Yeah, man. Shit's crazy right now, but it seems to be coming back. The industry's coming back. It has to doing lots of concerts, yeah. lots of shows. So hopefully yep. by 2022 we'll be like full swing again. Yeah. Yeah. The inevitable return. Yeah. I'm excited about it. I know for I had sure. a lot of concert tickets for 2020 that uh, are still, like, I'm getting emails about them. We're going to still do the show. And it's like two years later, man. Like, yeah. come on, let's do this. Right. <sighs> right, right, right. So, yeah. Yeah, so 22 will be good. But we've got a couple to check off the box, you know, a couple boxes to check off, sorry, uh, before then. Yeah. Yeah. That's coming soon. We're in, our, we're in November now. We're in November today. Yeah. yeah. Two months, man. Yep. Two months. You ready there. to do this, man? I'm ready. I'm always ready, man. <laughs> we got you. Got any more dates lined up for the rest of the year in December, or that's going to be it? The, the, the November one, and then November is going to be 2022. 2022 will be announced right at the beginning of the year. What we have going on? Awesome. Yeah. Big plans coming up. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I know, like, uh, you know how it is. I do, man. I it, do. It's, it's been such a, uh, so many false starts yeah. the last year and a half. I just, I can't even speak of it, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm uh, shy that they will, that's, that changes will happen. So, yeah, yeah, a lot of cool things in 22. I know every, every band, every musician says that, oh, great shit coming in the future. But, yeah, yeah they are going to be cool. Coolest ever. For well, us. we had, we had yeah. a lot of great stuff that would have happened. Yeah, 
if it wasn't for the pandemic, you know, there's a lot of yeah. cancellations, but that's just like everybody. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So good stuff. The idea is um, to um, turn people on to what we've got going on as much as possible. Yeah. You know? That's basically it. And we're bringing in some, uh, some good, some key players. Yours truly, a couple other fools. And uh, it takes a village to make it happen. It really does. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, it's not easy, man. Well, I know you have uh, places to be after this, man. I said I'd get you in and get you out of here. No, I can't just spend all the time with all our fans. We got to keep moving, you know. (laughs) That's it, bro. (laughs) So uh, (laughs) let's do some plugs before we get you guys out of here, man. Definitely check out uh, the. Let me see here. It is foundryrocks.com is the website. You guys also have the uh, the Facebook, the social media, and all that stuff going on. You got a concert going on November 28th. November 27th. 27th, 27th. Yeah, in sat- Louisiana. Yeah. Saturday, November 27th. Yeah. Thanksgiving weekend in Lafayette. And, oh, what, something that we should, uh, uh, your listeners might be into is we are going to live stream it. Oh, cool. Yeah. And where can they see the live stream? uh, At foundryrocks.com. Foundryrocks.com. Everybody go there. So, you know, Lafayette, Louisiana, not the most exotic destination in the world, you know. (laughs) Uh, So if you're not there, you can catch the live stream. And um, we're we're working on that as being part of every show that we do. Awesome. It is a live stream connect. So, um, yeah, more technology. Tune in. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I dig it, man. Well, that has been uh That's a wrap. Know, that's a wrap, bro. We'll right. I'll get you guys out of here. You got an appointment to go to. I don't want to keep you guys. Mark Bulls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just I appreciate you guys coming on, promoting the stuff, yeah. man. And uh we'll be fucking partying in Louisiana soon. Yeah. And yeah. Got some about? Cajun food, huh? Cajun to the food fullest in <laughs> with Jason Froberg. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. That I've was been, pretty good. I, I, I told you I've been practicing. Yeah, yeah. I have. I like that. I like that. I'm going to cut that and use it as a clip somewhere, Great. right? No. For sure, man. For Put sure. some verb on that bitch. <laughs> some, some pitch shift. Some pitch shift. You yeah. got the monster truck plug in there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> Champagne. <laughs> uh, well, Thank cool. you, brother. Thank yeah. you for being here. This has been uh, To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe, give us a like, ring the bell, follow us on social media, follow Foundry on social media, and check them out at foundryrocks.com, and check them out at the Cajun Dome in Louisiana on November 27th. And yep. yeah, it's a peace. Wrap. Peace. Thanks for watching To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts here and subscribe by clicking right here. We air new podcasts every Monday morning on Space Brain Station and all of your favorite podcast apps.